today's chemistry class today uh, we will discuss the topic factors affecting the formation of ionic compounds so last class we have studied what is ionic bond and what is ionic compound so here we will discuss the factors affecting the formation of ionic compound first one it is ionization enthalpy ionization enthalpy i think you have already studied ionization enthalpy it is represented by the symbol delta i h okay it is the amount of energy required to remove the most loosely bound electron of an isolated gaseous atom okay so ionization enthalpy is the uh, amount of energy required to remove the most loosely bound electron of an isolated gaseous atom okay it is delta ih represented by the symbol delta ih and here we can see that the lower the ionization enthalpy higher the ease of formation of ionic compound or positive ion okay so by losing an electron a uh, positive ion forms okay so the lower the ionization and then the of an atom greater the ease of formation of uh, positive ion so if ionization and then be is low it can very easily form that uh, atom can easily form ionic compound okay so example na gives na plus plus one electron so delta ih is equal to um, 495.8 kilo joule kilo joule per mole kilo joule per mole okay so this is the uh, reaction that means sodium loses one electron and it becomes positively charged in a plus ion so here this is an uh, energy uh, required to remove the Uh, electron from sodium okay so it is always an uh, endothermic process okay this this ionization this process is an endothermic process clear so lower the ionization there will be higher the ease of formation of positive ion okay and the second point is electron gain and there will be electron gain and there will be electron gain and then it is represented by delta egh h means and then eg means electron gain J, delta means change so electron gain and then is delta egh okay so the negative ion is produced by the addition of electron to an atom okay so we can see the example cl Plus one electron gives Cl minus. Okay, there is an energy. There is an energy required. It is an exothermic reaction. So the amount of energy liberated when an electron is added to an atom to form a negative ion. So higher the uh, electron gain and there will be uh, greater the ease of formation of negative ion. So higher the uh, Electron gain and there will be greater the ease of formation of uh, negative ion. So delta E G H of uh, chloride ion is three minus three forty eight point seven kilo joule per mole. Kilo joule per mole. Okay. So it is the amount of energy liberated when an electron is added to an atom. So we are getting chloride ion. Okay, you are getting chloride ion, and uh, greater the uh, electron gain, and there will be uh, greater the ease of formation of or higher the ease of formation of negative ion. So easily, any compound can be formed. And the third uh, point is lattice, and there will be okay, in lattice, and there will be. Lattice, and there will be is not by delta lattice H. Delta lattice. So lattice enthalpy is nothing but 
Lattice and there will be is nothing but the amount of energy liberated when uh, one gram mole of crystal is formed from its constituents, okay, from its gaseous ions. So it is the amount of energy liberated when one gram mole of crystal is formed from its uh, gaseous ions. Okay. So we can see the example of that. That means Na plus gas plus Cl minus gas gives NaCl. NaCl solid crystal. Okay. So here there is an energy liberated. That is known as delta lattice uh, H. Delta lattice H. That is minus 788 kilo joule per mole. Minus 788 kilo joule per mole. Okay, that is the uh, volume. So the it is the amount of energy liberated when uh, a solid crystal, one, one gram of a solid crystal is formed from its gaseous ions. So the energy is given there, for example. Clear. So the higher the lattice center phi, uh, greater the ease of formation of uh, its uh, ion. Okay, so it's uh, common. Okay, so higher the lattice center phi, easily uh, ionic compound can be formed. Okay, these are the factors which affect the uh, formation of ionic compound. Clear. So now we can see the differences between uh, ionic compound and covalent compound. Differences between ionic compound and covalent compound. So ionic, first one ionic, second one covalent, differences between ionic and covalent or uh, compounds. First one ionic compound, covalent compound. Okay, so here first of all we have studied that ionic compounds have high melting and high boiling point. High melting and uh, boiling point. High MP and BP. That means high melting and boiling point. This is due to the strong electrostatic force of attraction between the ions. So they have high ionic compounds have uh, high melting and high boiling point because of the strong electrostatic force of attraction. And in the case of cobalt bone, they have low MP and BP. Low melting and Boiling point due to the uh, weak Van der Waals force of attraction. Okay, this is the first difference. Okay, then ionic compounds are in solid state. Okay, most of the ionic compounds are in uh, solid state with a three dimensional network. Ionic compounds are in solid state with a three dimensional network. But the covalent compounds, but the covalent compounds. Their states either gaseous or liquid state. Okay, gas or liquid. They are in gaseous state of liquid state. Okay, gaseous state of liquid state. Clear. And the third difference is uh, they are insulated in solid state. Insulated in solid state. In solid state. Insulators in solid state and they are conductors okay, in aqueous state. Okay, they, uh, uh, they and they are conductors in uh, aqueous state. They conduct electricity in aqueous state. Ionic compounds conduct electricity in uh, aqueous uh, state or in or molten state. Okay, or molten or, conda, or uh, in aqueous state, they can conduct electricity because the ions are free to move clear and they do not covalent compounds do not conduct electricity in uh, fused or aqueous state they are insulated in all the form okay they do not conduct electricity in aqueous or in 
fused form. They are always insulated. Okay, they are ionic compounds are insulated in solid state, but conductors in uh, curved state or molten state. And fourth difference is soluble in polar solvents. Soluble in polar solvents. Polar solvents like water. Soluble in polar solvents like water. Soluble in polar solvents like water. And they are insoluble in polar solvents and soluble in non-polar solvents. Soluble in non-polar solvents. Soluble in non-polar solvents. So these are the differences between ionic compound and covalent compound. High melting point, here low melting point. Solid state. Uh, they are gaseous or liquid state. Insulators in solid state. Conductors in aqueous or molten. They are always insulators. Soluble in polar solvents. Soluble in non-polar non solvents. Okay. These are the differences between ionic and covalent bond. Okay. Now we can move on to the third category of bonding that is coordinate bond. Coordinate bond. So coordinate bond. Or coordinate covalent bond. Okay. Or simply you can write coordinate bond. Hmm? Coordinate bond. So coordinate bond is a bond which is formed by sharing of electron. But the uh, one atom is always deficient in electron and the other uh, atom has already completed its octet. So the electron are contributed by electrons are contributed by only one atom. So it is also known as bonding by electron pair donation. Bonding by electron pair donation. So when uh, this bond is formed between two atoms, so the electrons are contributed from only one atom. The two electrons are contributed from only one atom. Okay, and from other atom, another other atom, there will not be any electron. So that atom is electron deficient, and the other atom has already completed its octet. So the atom which contributes the electron for uh, Bonding is known as donor. The atom uh, which contributes the uh, electron for the bond formation is known as donor, and the other atom is known as acceptor. So we have donor atom and acceptor atom. The atom which donates or contributes electron for the formation of coordinate bond is known as uh, donor. And the atom, the other atom is known as acceptor. So this bond is denoted by an arrow mark like this. From uh, it points from donor to acceptor. From donor to acceptor. Clear. It is also known as coordinate covalent bond or dative bond, semipolar bond. It has many names. Okay. It is also known as semipolar bond, dative bond, coordinate covalent bond okay or donor acceptor bond many names are there okay donor acceptor bond semipolar bond dative bond uh, coordinate covalent bond okay so it is bonding by electron pair donation clear so we can discuss one example of formation of ammonia here when this bond is formed one atom is already completed its octet and another atom is electron deficient. This is a condition here. So we can see the example of formation of ammonium. Ammonium that is NH4 plus NH4 plus. Here in the case of ammonium NH3 combines with H plus you get ammonium ion. Okay. So this bond can be formed between uh, 
a molecule and ion. Okay, this bond can be formed between a molecule and ion. So we can see the example. So ammonium, the structure is like this, NH3. And one lone pair of electron is there. One lone pair of electron is there on nitrogen atom. And H plus you have, H plus. So this uh, lone pair of electron uh, donates with the hydrogen atom, so hydrogen ion. And there, uh, there is a bond formation between nitrogen and H plus ion. That is the coordinate bond between nitrogen and H plus. That you can see like this. So already they have three NH bonds and this pair is for this pair forms a bond with the uh, hydrogen and hydrogen ion. So NH4 plus is formed. Okay. And this is the coordinate bond. This is the coordinate bond. Okay. So here uh, NH3 plus H plus gives NH4 plus and on nitrogen atom it has a lone pair. So it has already this nitrogen has already completed its octet and hydrogen plus H plus is electron diffusion. So this uh, electron pair is donated between N and H plus and a coordinate bond is formed. So this is donor and this is accepted. So uh, I am all pointing from N to H because N is the donor and H is the acceptor. So like this you can uh, see the formation of H3O plus. That means H2O plus plus H gives H3O plus. Okay. The formation of this uh, you can uh, do at home as formal. Okay. So this is H3O plus formation. Okay. Coordinated bond. Clear? Because oxygen has two learned pairs of electron. So that is all about today's session. Thank you.